Omnipotence made these old motherfuckers even more deluded than they were before. Because, yeah, this, right? They start threatening Boruto that whatever he says won't matter because he ain't ever gonna leave that room and will die depending on his answer. I don't think you have the facilities for that big man. Yeah, I mean, it's not like Boruto is, what, a hundred times stronger than any other person in the series right now? Basically, if you've forgotten, all of these threats are meant for Kawaki. But his Pookie Ada came to save his ass. However, Shikamaru sees a flashback of him telling Boruto to take all the blame for now and asks if he's okay with it. But Boruto is him, stating that it was always his intention to become the bad guy for his brother. Remember, in chapter 13, he declared to Kashin Koji and even to Ada and Sasuke that he will end this brotherly quarrel following the footsteps of his goated father, Naruto. But this puts Shikamaru in crazy turmoil. The power of omnipotence is deleting his resolve and memories on why exactly he even decided to trust Boruto in the first place. Remember, chapter 7 revealed that even if Boruto reminds someone of omnipotence, their memories reset after some time and they end up forgetting. Shikamaru has come to help Boruto multiple times over, figuring out the truth each time, but eventually the plan always flops. Momoshiki also told us how humanity doesn't even question how many times omnipotence might have been used on them in the past by other Otsutsuki gods. However, this time, Shikamaru does remember and uses logical deduction with his big brain IQ to comprehend what is going on. This makes sense because even Amado, another high IQ individual, knows Wait about things not making Sumire sense. Right. Such as in chapter 5 when he tells Sumire that a scientist always remembers their own signature and that his was on Kawaki, concluding that his memories have been altered. But regardless, Boruto reveals that Naruto is still alive and safe, all to everybody's shock. And of course, Amado is still just smoking and looking sus, whilst Ada is wirelessly transmitting all of this and revealing it to her pookie. However, the elders are pissed. They believe this to be a lie. Whereas the funny thing is, Ikimoto transitions to the next panel of Amado, foreshadowing that he is the fox amongst sheep. But Boruto having too much aura has angered Ibiki. And with things getting out of hand, Shikamaru's Discord Nitro has just run out. So he's got to beg his kitten Eno to renew his subscription so that he can hop on call with Boruto. In spite of this, she's a bit sus of her friend. After all, calling a fugitive is a bit of a big red flag. Nonetheless, he begs her, not as the Hokage, but as a friend. Yeah, but it doesn't work. And to be honest, she just witnessed her son almost die, so it makes sense for someone in her position to no longer want to break the rules. And let's not act like Shikamaru isn't being a touch hypocritical here. When Amado was captured and brought into the village like Boruto after faking to kill his son, Shikamaru went straight to throttle the old geezer, which is probably why he doesn't press Ino further, as he can somewhat understand that her anger is justified. Thus, Boruto's head is slammed into the table by Ibiki. Who? But as a wise man once said, Never start with the head. The victim gets all fuzzy. Now, much like Joker, Boruto has been living in Ibiki's head rent-free for the last three years, who admits he's waited all this time to clobber the young lord. But he delivers one of the coldest lines ever, that Boruto wished he had free time like these losers. He's out of line. But he's right. This angers Ibiki, who continues to beat his ass up, claiming it's having no effect. This is crazy, as before in the anime, just a tenth of Ibiki's strength with a handshake caused Boruto to squeal like a baby in pain. Thus, Shikamaru calls in Mitsuki to use poison. That being said, Kanahamaru gives his opinion like anybody gives a shit. Don't get him out of here. He ain't, he ain't, he, he wasn't, he wasn't never amounting to shit anyway. He couldn't do nothing for our label claiming that Mitsuki wants to kill Boruto, so letting him inside isn't a good idea. What he doesn't realize is that Mitsuki actually wants that D. I beg your pardon? Talking as wanting D, Ada explains to Kawaki that Boruto is acting like a real brother, as he's actually protecting Kawaki's position in Konoha as he knows that he's living his dream. Meanwhile, Shikamaru unlocks the door to let Mitsuki in, but also slides him a special code. And despite Konohamaru's warnings, he enters Sage Mode and goes straight for the kill. Or does he? Because seriously, get this guy an Oscar already. Not only did he trick Konoha into thinking he was a traitor in the anime when he attacked Boruto on his way to the Cloud Village, but now he's pretending to attack Boruto so that he can use a snake to unlock his handcuffs. That's why he's the goat! 
But no true escape plan is complete without a trip to get the drip. Thus, Mitsuki tells his son where his sword and cape are, as Boruto teleports away to get them, explaining that he's more than happy to share information on everything if they handle it properly. That's why he's got no interest in fighting these two NPCs guarding Boruto's belongings. But of course, with the young lord's escape, Shikamaru gets a telling off by the elders. And so, whilst he stands alone, pondering what the heck is going on, Sarada and Sumire break in to ask what happened to their boyfriend. However, right as he explains that Boruto dipped from his women, the Kage group chat gets pinged, as Konkuro informs Shikamaru that Gara got bodied, and so did his son, Shinki. Hey, seriously, okay? At this point, think it's high time that Gara just, like, retired, bro? Listen, we all love him, yeah, but, like, I think it's time to pick up gardening again, my guy. Not only did Mama Shiki body your ass, you let Trashiki escape, and now you've been off-screened by some bum Shinju. Shinki, on the other hand, has been turned into a tree, much like Sasuke, called Ryu. You, which means grain, as in grain of sand. Yeah, I know, creative. But this is actually really big and bad, because not only is Shinki one of the most overpowered shinobi that a village has ever produced on the level of Boruto, but he also has a very close bond with the young lord. He's one of the only people to have ever witnessed his pure eye, after all. Furthermore, like many people, Shinki's character developed greatly after meeting Boruto, as the two shared many parallels. Like him, Shinki is the son of the Kage, but is adopted after Gara saved him. Thus, Shinki Shinki's quest for power is to make his father proud, like Boruto doing everything he can to not tarnish Gara's name. However, Boruto in his quest to make his father happy did disgrace him by cheating. Moreover, Shinki is a quiet and nervous individual, contrasting Boruto's lively attitude and desire to befriend everyone. In spite of this, after working together, Shinki learned to be more in tune with his emotions, learning to listen to his heart over direct orders at times, much like Boruto, going as far as even refer to him as a friend. However, whilst we all get ready for the worst future, you can enjoy a little bit more peak fiction by clicking this video on your screen right now.